Don Miguel Ricardo de Alava y Esquivel Order of Santiago, Order of Charles III, KCB, MWO was a Spanish general and statesman. He was born in the Basque country of Spain, at Vitoria Gastes, in 1770. Alava holds the distinction of having been present at Trafalgar, Vitoria and Waterloo, fighting against the British on the former and with them on the latter ones. Alava served as a naval aide-de-camp during the time of Spain's alliance with France but switched sides following Napoleon's invasion of his homeland, in 1808. Later he joined the headquarters of the British Peninsular Army as a military attaché and became a close friend of the Duke of Wellington. During the Waterloo campaign in 1815, Oliver was the Spanish envoy to the court of King William I of the Netherlands, which allowed him to be at Wellington's side during the Battle War of the Third Coalition. Oliver served first in the Navy, and had risen to be captain of a frigate when he exchanged into the Army, receiving corresponding rank. He was present as a Marine at the Battle of Trafalgar on board the flagship of his uncle Admiral Ignacio Alava, Peninsula War, at the Assembly of Bayonne in 1808. He was one of the most prominent of those who accepted the new constitution from Joseph Bonaparte as King of Spain. After the national rising against French aggression and the defeat of General Dupont at Bailin in 1808, Alava joined the National Independence Party, who were fighting in alliance with the English. At the end of January 1810 he was ordered to move to Portugal in order to communicate Wellington the difficult military situation in that they were against the French. During this stay a friendship between Wellington and Alava was created to the point that the Duke had him remain as delegate of the Spanish forces in the British units. He was promoted to brigadier by express recommendation of Wellington. He saw action in the battles of Salamanca, Vitoria, Busaco and at the siege of Ciudad Rodrigo, as well as taking part in the storming of Badajoz. Hundred days before the close of the Peninsular War, he had risen to the rank of brigadier general. On the restoration of Ferdinand, Oliver was cast into prison, but the influence of his uncle Ethanard, the Inquisitor, and of Wellington secured his speedy release. He soon contrived to gain the favour of the king, who appointed him ambassador to The Hague in 1815. It was therefore his remarkable fortune to be present at the Battle of Waterloo with Wellington's staff. Alava stuck close to the Duke during the battle yet, despite being in the thick of the action, both Wellington and Alava survived the ten hours' slaughter without so much as a scratch, with the Duke declaring to Alava, The hand of Almighty God has been upon me this day. He is presumed to have been the only man who was present at both Waterloo and Trafalgar, politician and diplomat. On the breaking out of the Revolution of 1820, he was chosen by the province of Alava to represent it in the Cortes, where he became conspicuous in the party of the Exaltados, and in 1822 was made president. In the latter year, he fought with the militia under Francisco Ballesteros and Pablo Murillo to maintain the authority of the Cortes against the rebels. When the French invested Cadiz, Oliver was commissioned by the Cortes to treat with the Duc d'Angleme, and the negotiations resulted in the restoration of Ferdinand, who pledged himself to a liberal policy. No sooner had he regained power, however, than he ceased to hold himself bound by his promises, and Oliver found it necessary to retire first to Gibraltar and then to England. There, he was given a house on the Duke of Wellington's Hampshire estate Stratfield Say and introduced to his bank accounts. This is my friend, and as long as I have any money with your house, let him have it to any amount he thinks proper to draw for. On the death of Ferdinand, he returned to Spain, and espousing the cause of Maria Cristina against Don Carlos was appointed ambassador to London in 1834 and to Paris in 1835. Proposed as Prime Minister in September 1835, he rejected his nomination. After the insurrection of La Granja, he refused to sign the Constitution of 1837, declaring himself tired of taking new oaths. 
and was consequently obliged to retire to France, where he died at Bereges in 1843. Frequent and honorable mention of Oliver is made in Napier's History of the Peninsular War, and his name is often met both in Lives of the Duke of Wellington and in his correspondence. Quotation. Aversion to certain English words.